<clears throat> Radiant Team Ban Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Oh! Navi's turn to pick. Bounty Hunter. Radiant Team Pick. Welcome back, everybody. We are jumping into the European Division of Things. So if you are looking for the Southeast Asian game that you were just watching, that is now going to be on ESL underscore join Dota Blue. Right now, we're going to be jumping into Navi versus New Team. Uh, apologies, this may be a little bit rough. We had some studio equipment kind of blow up Ten yesterday. So I uh, think we fixed everything today. Dust. We do have some backups ready to go if something continues to go terribly wrong. But Navi's I want to be able to welcome in Internal Envy, who wanted to be able to cast these series. Welcome. Welcome, man. This is our first time casting together. Hello. So why exactly were you... I, I know because, you know, you're on Team Secret now. Congratulations. That new roster is looking pretty damn good. You guys are getting invites, and I saw you were just kind of like, it's nice being invited, but you want to play some Dota. Is that why you wanted to be able to cast some of these games? Uh, I just uh, I have no scrims to... Radiant <laughs> gotcha. Team Might as well. And these games are pretty hype because, like, like it's a new start of the season, so everyone's really hyped about their new team, and they all want to like, like this is where there's like the least amount of cancer on the team, and the <laughs> the time where like you don't really there are some times where I win games and I'm like oh my god you know I sure be won but it feels like Five the other team already gave up or something like that but right at this point of time like everyone's already like everyone's fucking hyped everyone's trying to everyone's believe so their team hope for the future yeah. is that what you yeah saying? we're just weak at least <laughs> <laughs> well, then we'll it's fucking it gone. <laughs> We'll now see what happens after this series, though, bad. because it is an elimination match, so, you know, things can get pretty tense. Uh, real quickly, let's talk about the Navi roster before we get into the draft. Um, uh, what do you think about this changeup? Do you know anything about uh, PSM? Radiant I presume you saw bad. at least a little bit of Yellow Summer. I uh, know. Nothing. No? Okay. Okay. All right, then let's go straight into the draft, shall we? We've got Bounty Hunter, Earthshaker for Navi, Tusk, Shadow Fiend as an opening for new team. I would say pretty standard stuff. Bounty Hunter really valuable, but of course we have Ten SF Radiant side. Remaining. Yeah, I mean Bounty Hunter, Tuskar is first pick heroes. Remaining. I'm actually interested in seeing uh, Yoki play Shadow Fiend because the scrims we had against him, he just plays int heroes and he's, he's been playing int heroes every game. Mm -hmm. Like uh, he played left rock and co mm -hmm. he, he doesn't play anything that's tanky and he doesn't build tanky either. Yeah. So he, now he's playing on uh, a tank. Now, what do you think about the... Uh, I actually had an interesting conversation with Theban at um, TI, and we were talking about the, the Shadow Fiend build, and he was actually saying that he wasn't sure if Shadow Fiend should go mech anymore. I mean, you remember TI, SF was a big loser. Um, what do you think was something specific about the item build for SF that was really failing, or what went wrong at TI? Yeah, just uh, all these new heroes. I mean, not, not new heroes, but the meta consists around, like, Clockwork, like maxing the rocket, or like something like that, mm -hmm. or like these Tuscar Linas of like these 10 fissure, like these 10 million range spells that kill waves really quick and just harass you down. And no one really ever commits, so Radiant you just get harassed. Team. Like, one, like what they use one spell on you and you use mech, and, that, and that's your mech, and then they use the spell again, so you don't really get to use the, the mech to fight anymore because there's not really a fight. Mm -hmm. So do you think that um, SF should be building a little bit more stats and mid to late game focus rather than the early, like, immediate mech, then BKB, which is so mid game focused? Yeah, I think you should go drums SMY or SMY, but we'll have to see. I, I, like, it's not a build that's been really been truly tested yet. Right. So it's not, you can't just really say that, I think. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm a hero might just suck us. <laughs> we don't even know. All right, we'll see our time. second set of bands: Darkseer and Phantom Lancer, banned away by Navi. Navi Winter Wyvern and Wind Ranger actually taken out by New Team, and they immediately go for the the Spirit Breaker. So the combination of Tusk Spirit Breaker, both of these looked at as so, uh, sometimes off lane, sometimes the four position. What's the breakup between these two? Um, I, I really think it's a mistake to ban Phantom Lancer over Spirit Breaker when you have Earth Shaker. I think Spirit Breaker Tuskar is uh, like the combo is it's really Ten strong and it's very good against uh, Bang Hunter and Earth Shaker. Mm -hmm. so, but, uh, Five seconds. Uh, sorry, I, I actually didn't really uh, get your question. You mean the support, like which one support, which one's not, or like yeah, are they both exactly. support? Which one's going to be our offlaner? Is it Tusk? I don't know actually. I think okay. we'll have to see. It's probably got to be Spiritbreaker being the one that's farming, and Tuskar has got to be the one that's ro rotating around. But like Spiritbreaker can just randomly charge the Bounty Hunter when Bounty Hunter goes on SF. Yeah. They're, they're basically, like right now, they can protect the SF, and because Navi has like two heroes that can fuck the SF. Mm -hmm. the Bounty Hunter, Earthshaker, both of them can. Yeah, roam the, the Bounty Hunter, like he roams him early, right? And the Earthshaker is just good for that. So much burst damage into stable. Oh. Yeah, you definitely want to protect your shelf, especially on Radiance, where you can abuse the jungle and you can, like, I mean, it's not. I mean. On Radiance, if they're trying to gank you, I guess you just go with jungle, but on Radiance, that's where you can. Really snowball your SF like crazy, so they're trying to do that right now. Now, the Shadow Demon is a really interesting support pickup. Uh, when you're talking about defensive supports, Dazzle was way highly prioritized over uh, pretty Ten much any other remaining. defensive support. Shadow Demon was hardly ever seen. Why do you think they're picking Five it up here? Seconds remaining. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <Actually>. <laughs> Time. Right. I actually yeah, have no clue. Something very new, potentially, to the Navi's meta. Turns I have to Slark. Get... Okay, I mean, it's good against uh, Bang Hunter, I think. Mm -hmm. It's definitely good against Bang Hunter. Right, did just... Like smash in lane. And then it's probably really good against Shadow Demon as well. But it's really bad against Earthshaker. But the thing is, is like, in, in a sense, it's also really good against Earthshaker. Earthshaker is one of these heroes that, like, he's kind of weak. In the early game, especially when you first two him, you can kind of just strapped around it. Yeah. And Slark, like, remaining. he just, uh, he, if he gets farmed, like, he doesn't Five care about Earth Shaker either. And this FN guy seems to just play random heroes, and he's been destroying. He played fucking Earth Slow. He's oh, yeah. Time. Yeah, he's playing fucking Slark. And, yeah. and they have Gold Black, they just draft. He, he, he always Strong drafts, like, spirit. every game, there's always one random ass hero he has to draft, Radiant and whether it's, like, Lich bad. or Ursa or Slark, he just has to have it there. Yeah, it. <laughs> I was just thinking when PSM picked up the Shadow Demon, I had to double check the teams just because I was like, it feels more like a Go Black pick than, than anything else, but uh, we'll see if he's going to pick up that random hero yet. Ten Navi, seconds they've remaining. got the Storm Spirit now on their side. There is still a good amount of disable Five between the Tusk and the Spirit Breaker to control him, though. Oh, they, they have the Shadow Demon now, though, so it makes sense Ten because you can, save the, you can save the Storm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I wonder, like, I don't know, like, you, you save the Storm? But like for what? Navi's like what are you saving them for? Like, cause Earthshaker needs to get super fast. Because like even if you disrupt their storm, I, I, like it's, it's not like during those 2.5 seconds you can turn it around with a banning hunter. Like, it's not a banning hunter than a fucking kill everyone. Right. Like, everyone on the new team is so tanky, Ten and like they have so remain. so many annoying spells. Like it's gonna be hard to kill them Radiant unless your Earthshaker gets pick. fat, and he's not gonna get fat. I mean, like. It's just not gonna happen. So carry wise, you kind of need like a do shit, like snowballing kind of hero, right? When the storm. You need like a gyrocopter. Right. That's <laughs> bad. Like something or a track, like something like that. Like you need something that has that has the ability to kill you, like everybody. Uh, when it comes to other carries that come online, like decently early, I'm thinking Juggernaut, AM seems maybe just a bit too Ten farmy for the remaining. first 25 minutes. Do you have any other suggestions? Uh, Five not really sure. Remaining. I'm thinking of Luna. Yeah. Okay, Luna, Luna would be probably much Navi's better than, like, Juggernaut's terrible versus Slark, right? Because it's like, you, you need a hero that can kill everyone, and, like, uh, I, don't, I don't think Juggernaut or anti can do that, like... Yeah. Alright, well, Bane going the way of new team, Go Black will get uh, a, a fellow defensive support to, to match that Shadow Demon. Um, something that should be pretty good versus, um, like, and if you can interrupt the chain, right? Really good fix, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Ten seconds and Navi remaining. now left with a full minute to decide what their carry is going to be here. Five seconds remaining. They don't even have something like... I, I, time. I feel like so much of this game has got to be on like the bounty hunter just making things happen in the early game. 
like making sure that Storm Spirit wins his Razor. mid lane matchup. Oh, Razor. That can, that can do it. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, that kind of line early enough. No, and he, he's gonna. It's, it's good because they, they needed something to secure the top lane. The top lane's pretty hard. It's like Spirit Breaker Tusk card is a pretty hard lane. And because they need to. Like, the most important thing right now is the mid lane. Because I, I don't think that they can really stop the Stark too much. They have to kind of focus on it. I mean, they have to focus on one of them, like one of these, one of the two. What, like, even a position one or position two. So they needed something really strong to fend on his own, and uh, Razor is definitely the best hero. If, if you ignore, like, who's playing who right now, like, when you see Dendi on Storm Spirit, okay, you go, okay, he's going to be mid, right? But um, do you think there's a situation where they would Ten put Razor mid against the SF? Yes. Does he do any better against SF than Storm does? Five seconds. Um, Razor beats SF 101 for sure, yeah. but five, it's not like that, I think. I, 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 I think you just put the Razor safe lane. Okay. It's, it's much easier for Storm to rotate to jungle than Razor for Razor. <laughs> what do we go for build wise, though, on the Razor in um, in this kind of game? Uh, let's let's see. Like, I would probably go mech. Because, like, the thing is, if you go mech and you win some fights of track, oh, there's smoke on that one. But yeah, it, it, like, you can go mech and people will think, oh, yeah, you should go drums or something else that gives you better farm, right? But as long as you win some fights of the mech with Bounty Hunter, you're gonna the farm will come. Right. Anyway, like Navi's already doing some fucking shit, you know. They they're trying to <laughs> trying to show off their new team that they have big balls. I, I guess so. <laughs> Five man smoke. Right. That's, that's, fucking, that's a fucking that's a fucking girl. Alright, so See if they can burst him down. He's got nothing to start away to, so they should be able to get this kill. Good Fisher block there from Funnick, and a first blood goes to Sonic. Wait, Sonic last year was a really weird build. It's, it's good that he got this kill because he doesn't have Orbit Venom or like or boots. To it. He's not sending himself any items, so I don't quite understand this. Maybe he'll get the Orbit Venom from the Secret Shop. You can't do that anymore. Though. Oh, that's right. That's right. Like, this is actually just weird, like, it's gonna be saved for a minus, so... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is happening, <laughs> actually. Can he buy an item? Like, is he not used to having gold? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, what do you mean? There you go, there you go. Alright, what's he... Yeah, okay, you got the Orb of Venom coming in. Uh, I feel like he should've bought Stick as well, and he missed his block? Alright, whatever. Well, we're gonna have pretty standard lane. Standy is going to be our mid against the SF. Uh, is gonna be wandering around Funic as the uh, offlane Earthshaker already going for a block. He actually chose to let one of the melee creeps run through just to make sure that the creep equilibrium goes his way, even if the first wave isn't a uh, real great position for him. They've already got the counter ward laid down, so this bounty hunter isn't really gonna be that effective until he uses a counter of his own. He's got Tango, so he can instantly clean it up. Oh, the shelf is gonna be fucking sad. The uh, let's let's see. Wait, does he have sentry? Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens to the sentry work. Because now there's a pause, though. Like they're getting ready for this like sentry eating contest. Yeah, that, that's the play, right? You have like a almost a full second to be able to still kill the enemy sentry. Yeah. If you eat that sentry, you're like you have like they have like double XP or something. Like, yes. Yeah. Goes goes crazy. You have like two hundred. You have three hundred XP. Two hundred something. Right? Right, 230 XP. So you have 32 XP per second. That's insane. Oh, okay, so they're actually... Um, I wasn't looking at the offlane for new team, but they're actually putting their Spirit Breaker in the offlane. Is this just to get him to level 2, and then he rotates out and Tusk takes over? Do you think Tusk is actually going to be in that dedicated core position? Oh, uh, uh, Tusk is definitely support. And if you look at the players, is, is, is no for support? Yeah. Alright. And then he support them. There you go. But do you think that's the the right idea? I mean... Yes. Okay. Yeah, I talked about it earlier. I, I think so. Because the Spirit Breaker can charge from afar. So he can get there anyway. Yeah. So the Tuscar has to be the one in position. The... I think Goldback needs to pull right now. So when he comes, comes back. Hopefully he makes it. He shouldn't make it because he's vain. It's yeah. really important that he pulls. If he doesn't pull, right, it's pretty game losing. That's a pretty big downside of running like the five man aggression that Navi did in the top lane. There's no possible way for Earthshaker to get a ward up to block out the pull, so this should be kind of free experience for the supports and his Fisher blocking isn't really gonna save him at all. Yeah. Alright. Looks like we're finally ready here. 
and Aiko just doing a bit of damage all the way runs in. He will be able to kill the sentry and Yoko unable to deny the enemy sentry. So misses out on that opportunity and he'll probably... Oh, no fear is actually going to come back and he's still got two sentries. So they're just going to continue this play this game and make sure the SF gets as much as possible. Do you ever think about, because it is Radiant Side SF, do you ever go and block out the hard camp or the medium camp that he usually stacks up from? Uh, I'm not too sure. He, he could do it if he wants to, but he's honestly a sentry for the, for the wait, eating contest. Alright, so he didn't pull a level 1 of Kovac, and that was pretty game losing. Uh, now Earthshaker's almost level 3. Yes, he would have been level 2 instead. Oh dear. And, and now the Bane's level. Like, what should be happening? Oh, really? Fuck. Okay, whatever. This, this Bane should be level two right now, and this Shaker should be level two right now. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, lane, and the and the lane will be in a better position. I mean, basically, they just gave Earthshaker one extra wave. And it, this, I, I find this very important because the Earthshaker has a really greedy item build. But he has no tangles. And the Stark with eight tangles. Uh, and like, so this Earthshaker can't do anything if the lane is in a good position. Basically, he can't. Like, he can't run up and hit creeps or, like, do anything. So giving him this extra level when he has the shitty item build is very, uh... I'm not shitty item build, but greedy item build is very... Yeah. It's very important. What, what is his item choice? Is he just waiting for one more CS and then he goes straight to the soul ring with no HP regen? Or is he gonna go for boots from the side shot? I'm not sure, actually. I, I feel like they're happy with what's happening mid. I, I don't feel like he should rotate. I think if he gets level 3 now, and he gets a soaring, he can just keep fissuring. Yeah, you're saying yeah. the boot, the boots build is meant for you being able to rotate to mid, right? Uh, sure. You can do it. Okay. Like, if, 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 if Earthshaker rotates mid, then Bane will rotate mid, basically. It'll be a level for 3 Shaker versus level 2 Bane. Or, well, level 2 Shaker versus level 2 Bane. And if he stays bottom, then Bane stays bottom. But Bane could rotate mid, you know, and Shaker and TP mid. That's... I don't know, because everything is really focused on a mid lane right now. You're not really going to be able to stop the Sark from farming. Okay. Alright, looks like we're going to go again. If they have another pause like that, guys, we'll just uh, cut to a, a break screen. But we're going to have a uh, resume here. Shadow Demon's going to continue to try and keep Cedoy back from getting that level 2. He really needs to be able to rotate efficiently. Suneko comes in. They're going to be able to get a good amount of damage on this SF. In fact, Dendi, they're going to commit to the kill here. Diving in deep. But, oh, the barely last right click out from Dendi is able to get the kill. A counter ward being placed there from no fear, but he had no more mana left to be able to continue to go on that bounty hunter. The charge comes out from Cedoy, but he already cancels that one. And the first blood and second blood both going to Navi in the start. I mean, I keep talking about, I'm touching on this, but because of Bane didn't pull, like, the first wave, he couldn't reach the rune. Because if he pulled earlier, the, the, this would've already happened and would've just got the rune. Now Shaker has bought a bottle for his item and he got the regen rune. Is that... This is pretty fucking annoying, actually. He's gonna get off his CS with the sugar. Yeah, that's really fortunate for him. And you can't, you can't really kill the Shaker either, because if you sleep him and to set up for a Stark, he'll just DPL. Right. It's actually a big deal. Man. Yeah, they're gonna go for it now. Funnick is gonna be body blocked up. They're gonna go for the sleep. FN is gonna catch the gun for the pounce here, but TP away, just as you said. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, we actually have the SF being able to pick up the Storm Spirit. And I look where he TP to. He TP to the same tower, and then he just visioned him. <laughs> so he's lost no time whatsoever. And he will be right back in experience range. Yeah, and, and now the, the wave is also pushing into him, so he's so happy. He's actually so happy. He's actually, he's actually happy as boy. He's a happy Earth Shaker, man. Uh, stacking wise, I'm not sure how well Shadow Demon's really going to be able to do uh, when it comes to keeping Spirit Breaker out. Do they dedicate any supports to um, getting Dendi some stacks on the uh, on the dire side? Because that's the thing, he's going to be competing with the SF and farm in ways, and he can't really keep up against a Radiant side SF, but they could try and make it a little bit easier for him by stacking Dire Jungle. Uh, they're both, they both have no stacks right now. And you can't really, they're not gonna stack us, I keep trying to kill them. Yeah, Shadow Fiend already feeling that pressure. Dendi, oh nice rage turn oh, right there. Go. He's still in the vision. AI shards, just a bit too late. And Bounty Hunter will just feed himself to the Ancients and come back fresh and ready. Uh, he could have actually killed him with the second dirt race. But he messed up. Oh. 
CS wise, we're looking pretty even on the board right now. FN actually getting some small amount of damage on Funnick, but he's keeping up with the Razor. And Bounty Hunter, well, actually, Slurk's a little bit low. He doesn't have Shuriken on Sineko just yet. I think they want to be able to wait for that one. That level Dying one nuke is so big. Money is actually going to be jumped here, but the turnaround with the Shuriken, they probably have the first damage necessary to get the sword kill. And now Goblock comes forward with his illusions, but not much he can do. Yeah, they're, they're, Nobby's winning the early game. Uh, I, I don't quite understand what Nofer is doing, though. He, he, he could have stacked twice already, but he was just standing there. He wasn't doing anything. Like, there's there's a word there though, but I don't I don't even know if he knows that there's a word there. I feel like he's just not trying. The bounty hunter's doing great. Level four by uh, the fifth minute, with all of his uh, rotating around the map. Successfully being able to get a couple of kills now and jump them up. Keeping up here in the middle lane, no fear. Double raids comes out, but still not enough damage. Now the Fisher turn around. Dendi is able to pop just one more remnant to be able to get that extra damage. And Yoku even pushed back by Funic. Dendi, great turnaround, and now has his level 6 before the next gank comes in. It's going to be very critical as they lack any power now to be able to take him out until the Spirit Breaker's level 6. <laughs> Funic is going to go for the rotation around Sidoy. Not sure if they really have the burst damage necessary to be able to take him out, but we'll see. Maybe a good Fisher block and enough damage from that plasma field and they can kill him, but never mind. It's healed up the pulp. Now it's just too impossible to take. Radiant's top tower is under attack. The so Slark got level 6 now. He, he should be... He's gonna be fine forever now. I, think. I, I wonder if he's gonna be able to carry. Like, this... The hero is so weird. Because now this game is so hard. Like, the the, the, the back got, he's gonna get level 6. Oh, oh. But, SF slowed down, PSM trying to get enough damage out from the Shadow Poison isn't going to be enough by itself. Fisher stopped there as the Nightmare comes out, the charge comes through, and it bumps back to Andy. Funic throws out the Fisher now, but the rest of his team wants to back Dyer's up. Bottom tower Navi just attack. playing it safe as the team rotate all four heroes attack. into that middle lane to try and counter Navi's constant two or three man ganks in middle. Still though, in a game like this, when you're saying that it's going to be a hard game for Slark, you're talking about um, some very tough heroes attack. to kill, whether it's the Razor's tankiness or it's going to be the Storm Spirit's uh, natural mobility. What kind of item build do you go for? Do you go for a stats base S and Y, or do you try and still go for that Shadow Blade or Blink Dagger? Uh, I'm not too sure right now, because when he first he needs to get Treads, and then he needs to get a Magic Wand. And then after that, we'll have to see where the game is because you can't really go out of late of like nothing you can't really kill anyone right both are having a very nice time here in this top lane he would just always push back Cedo eventually he will take this tower he's already got uh, ring of regen ring of Basilis, and power trades so uh, pretty good chunk of net worth ahead of our slark Denny, they're actually, actually, uh, oh, nice. A three okay. stack. Yeah. This hard camp, yeah. Denny's gonna clear through it with the help of, uh, Sneko. And that's gonna attack. really shut down that SF so much. Oh, he's pretty, he's pretty fucked. No, uh, he's, he's fine. Actually. He's still got he's another fine. three stack, yeah. Sark's fucked, though. He's mad. <laughs> yeah. He had that maxed out, uh, dark pack build. Specifically to be able to clear through stacks, and now it's going to be completely ruined. Snake oh, couldn't quite snag that in this room. Like, new team has been slowing down the game a lot. This is good. This, this bang hunter hasn't been finding levels. Like, as long as they, if they can make a move before Razor has a mech and before he has a dagger on Shaker, then they can, they, they can, they can still pull ahead. By slowing down the game, you mean playing a lot more defensively and, and just making sure that no one gets picked off? Yeah. Especially playing around their jungle quite right. a bit. All six for a fruit Alright, we'll see if Cedoy can make something happen here. Sineko is scouting him out, though. How's Funic doing? He's level six. Looks like he's still going to be going for the uh, Tranquil Boots and Soul Ring, though. 
Dyer's middle tower is under But attack. both teams just taking advantage of their jiggle as much as possible. Not quite ready. Looks like Denny's still going to be going for the Orchid route. Field Spark is in a pretty good place right now. Farm-wise, that he can go for We don't, we don't know if he's going to go Orchid yet. He, that might just be Truts. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's right. definitely going to be Truts, and then we'll have to see from there. Yeah, so he could still go for the Bloodstone build. Yeah. But full rotation up. They do have that Invis rune on the SF. They spotted out no fear coming up. Maybe they think they can take this fight, but the SF... Oh, he actually doesn't have Guildman. That's going to be a little bit sad for them. Sleep goes out. Goku turns around. Looking for those raids. Actually missing one. Gets the second one for the Snowball comes in. Trying to slip to the turret, but still not enough. The boat gets a minor save thanks to that Shadow Demon, but still, that Ben as well. Goku just running through these heroes, but what a great Echo Slam from Swanning. That's now going to be able to turn around the fight. Kills the SF. FN managed to finish off the Bounty Hunter, but he's got to be able to escape. His pounce is not up for another 10 seconds, but Dendi... Is completely out of mana and no soul ring for another 12 seconds. So they can't pursue. Still, though, a good fight for Navi. They managed to kill the SF and make it a two for three exchange. Yeah, that's a, that's a level six battle right now. These fights are. Top tower like, is under attack. New, like, new team has to win these fights. It's like convincing, you know, or they're going to give away so many track kills. Yeah, you can't afford to make trade offs anymore. One for one, two for two. That's always going to be bad if there's track kills. Yeah, and I'm definitely wrong about the, the, the way I talked about the picks because. Like, look at the picks again, like, giving, giving Na'Vi, giving Sonic Kill a roaming hero in, in general is, it's very bad. Like, giving him Bounty Hunter is not good. He, he has, he covers, like, the most distance of any player in the world, literally. Mm -hmm. That's a statistic. He's just very good at Bounty Hunter. I remember when we tried to draft, drafting against them, playing against Na'Vi, we always fought about, uh, not giving him that hero. And I think Na'Vi has better late game. And I, I don't see them, it's kind of hard to break them right now, because every hero they go on has a, like either they're really that tanky, like Razor or whatever, so Shadow Team will attack. always get turn time to save them, and then they can turn around with some tracks and some like, Earthshaker or something. Yeah, so, Sinego is always the one for me with uh, the Winter Wyvern, who was always successfully Dyer's able to pick off the Courier. Just because he had the, the Q ready to go, and would just sit there for like two and a half minutes waiting for the Courier to come by. Yeah, he's an asshole, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's definitely like a... Uh, that's, uh, a that's a mech. That's, yeah. a, that's a mech on the... Shelfing. He has a, he has it up for like a minute over the razor for like 30 seconds. So like let's 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 get something in these 30 seconds. <laughs> like if I can get that mid-tower, dude. <laughs> yeah, get it right now. And there's Slark's a decently attack. high level. He went for the drums build, so a little bit more stat focused. Uh, we'll see where he goes after the ring of killer drums. Right. The TP does very good top of the defender tower because he can discharge with. Yeah. I wonder if they're gonna go for the mid-tower now. They have the muck. Uh, Slark actually is going to head all the way back to base, but if he TPs into the middle tower, they'll still be there. In a short amount of time, Snake already attack. setting up these tracks. Dyer's middle tower is well, under room. Looks like they might collide on no fear. Regen is picked up, but then he's right on top of Tons and is not able to get out of his level on time. Passing around the night there. Yoku's going to be the next target. Dendi's a bit low on the mana. Slark's backing himself up. Now, Slam on the most, and Zeta will actually walk back Dendi as well. Ultimate goes out. Nice Shattered Demon disruption save. Actually managed to save the most of a lot of damage. Another great ultimate out from Funnick. Managed to finish off one hero. FN battling it out with the Hobos, but still not up damage, and Goblin is going to be the next target. Funny, still got another two seconds till his Fisher. They could even clean up all these heroes. He stunts up Yoku. Meanwhile, Dendi's looking to finish off Goblin at the same time. They got greedy, and they end up missing out on both kills in the process. Or maybe not. Sineko still wants to go for Goblin. He's tracked up. He'll get him in the end with the Shuriken, and there's no response from no fear. Oh, God. It's my, like, this track, this, this Urshan just runs in and not goes because he has track. <laughs> Is that gonna be funny? <laughs> Especially with the Tranquil Boots? He's so yeah. fast. He's like, he just runs in a 470 I'm messaging. He's <laughs> fucking echoes. Uh -oh. Everyone runs away. He's already got 1300 gold too, so this Blink Dagger is gonna be coming up so quick. Honestly, this game is fucking hard. <laughs> this game is rough, like yeah. super rough. They have so much single target on new team. That they don't really have any really big spells. Except Shadow Fiend. That's not... I wonder how they're gonna come back here. It's... Uh, PSM actually went for the maxed out Shadow Poison builds. Um, ever since the slight nerf to Soulcatcher way back when, when it was able to go up to 60%, and then the recent change where you can actually stack five Shadow Poison. Oh, hold up. Funnick in the top lane is going to be massively charged up. Everything they have to be able to kill Funnick to make sure he doesn't get that Blink Dagger any quicker than he's already set up to. Sidoy is going to just TP away, and looks like No Fear might be able to escape. They do have the Bane coming down. 
No, actually, he just goes right back to farming, no fear. Looks like he will be able to get out in time, Ice Shards. Yeah, dude, sure. they actually would've killed him if they kept committing. I, 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 I wonder why, like, Seneca was being a bitch star. Because yeah. he ran away. Because they have the mech, and the Razor has 1500 HP on mech. But, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like, but the Earthshaker kill was actually pretty huge. He's, uh, he's not the latest dagger, and every, every minute that they can delay on that dagger is, like, an extra minute before they lose the game. Right. Because yeah. when that dagger is up, like... Realistically, they actually lost. Especially the Slark. Like, that, that carry is so hard to play against the uh, instant stun. Especially with all the burst damage that Earthshaker offers. And the same's gonna kind of apply to the Shadow Beam. Because he is gonna be going for that BKB next item, not a big surprise. It's, it's a really big deal, because had this Shaker not died there, he would have he would just been farming right now, because he would have like 1800 gold or something like that. Yeah. And he would just be bottom farming, chilling. And then once he gets the dagger, they can get Roshan or any tower they want because they have medallion. Well, maybe Navi can make up for that lost gold through some track kills. They're going to play uh, a three man game attack. of aggression. PSM just runs right into no fear between these tier one and tier two towers. And we'll be able to get away to safety in an awkward situation. So Havos starts pushing in that tier one tower. They're hoping to be able to like cut behind the team while Havos pushes in the tower and catch him out, but that doesn't look like it's possible anymore. Radiance top tower is under attack. So the team looks like they're just gonna go back to farm. They really need to help the streaker get his dagger, I feel. Havos well, isn't gonna help him out. Same goes with Dendi. Both these cores are gonna take the rest of the jungle away. I feel like the, the farm should go to Storm for... Because I don't think the Storm or Razor means that much right now. He already has his mech. He has his old grass. He's already happy. The bust or uh, the, the dagger is more important. Oh. I mean, they're, they're looking so Gucci though. Like, it's, it, like, it's at the point where a new team makes one more mistake, this game is over. They can still turn around with one 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 play, and then if they if they get that one play, they might like turn the game into like what they had yesterday with the PL, where FN just solo carries the game. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Uh, I was just about to ask if you're a new team's position, because you're in kind of a precarious situation here. Do you just start blowing through some of your early smokes to try and claw your way back into this game? Uh, I mean, they just use one. Oh, man. Oh, Unfortunately, it's really hard, especially with all these tier 1 towers still up. They don't have a whole lot of openings. Mm. I don't know. Like, for, I, I would I would sneak Roshan, first of all. And then, if I don't get it, then I just BPL. Because they had a DD run on SF as well. I think that was the only play they could have went for. And if, I think they had the opportunity. I feel like they could have got it right now. Especially with FN, he's got 2k gold, so once you get one of those mobility items, that'll come in soon. Alright, this Earthshaker's gonna have his dagger now, and Storm's gonna have his bullet soon. Yeah. And I think when you have those items, that's when you just try to get the Roshan. I wonder if they're gonna wait for BKB on Razor, I don't think they should. What, what item build would you prefer? No, no, I mean, I don't think they should wait for it. Oh, okay. Nice. See, Dendi, he just wants to finish up that Bloodstone first, heads up to the top lane to get it. 6 to 12 right now, 17 minutes in, 4,000 gold lead for Navi, 3,000 experience. Mech keeps him alive a little bit longer, but still, with all those heroes sitting there from new team, they're easily able to burst out the bottom counter. It was out of position, and maybe they can keep some pressure now on this middle tower. They have a BKB on SF now. And they have a, a really big rune. The fucking S4 rune is always very important. And then you have Dagger on the uh, Smoke. That's a huge smoke down. Another blink dagger. Not actually gonna go in. Cedo is even charging money to make sure there is no Echo Slam initiation. Make sure it's not quite lucky. Now the Echo Slam comes in. Isn't enough damage to finish off Cedo. He wanted by himself. He needs a little help. But both still not enough. Now the new comes in. They're able to finish him off. Denny, meanwhile, look for the support on the side. Go Black did fall. Looks like No Fear is gonna go down as well. Navi, even if they did lose Funnix, still managed to pick up three. Yo, I, I think he's gonna kill the the shadow here. Right now. Yeah, will be able to latch it. He's gonna he's gonna get raised right now. So. And there's no raise. So PSM is able to back up to safety. 
I wonder if they can push us hard. These two are so dangerous. Fa taking some serious liberties with that dark pack. And Navi, looks like they're gonna need a little bit more time. That was a, a pretty still good fight for Navi. You had some track kills in there as well. Yeah, well, every fight that, um... Actually, I don't know, like, who benefits Lake him. I have to think, I have to think it has to be Navi. I, I just have so much respect for Storm. In the lake game. I respect Shaker. But I, I, don't, I don't quite understand Slark. You mean the Slark pickup? Or how to? That's just a hero, like. Yeah. He, I don't understand how strong that hero can be. Because a hero is much stronger than people think, give credit to, if he survives the laning stage. Even going lake game? Yeah, I think so. His, his lake game is very weird. Yeah. Because he, he doesn't. He's not a hero that that does that much damage initially. Like he pounces you and then he, he, he kills you and that's like some hundred damage or something. Then he's like kind of done. But then eventually he gets insanely strong. Like he just keeps hitting you. He keeps hitting you. Yeah, he just keeps he on gets... ramping up. Especially with the build that um remember that build that Black went where it was super late game and he went refresher as his last item to be yeah, able to just build and build. Yeah. The he double just, shadow dances. Yeah, then then you you just you just become ridiculous. Yeah. You have uh, two BKBs against a lineup that doesn't have anything that goes for BKB. Uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. And he does have a Blink Snowball at, w at one point, eventually, to save him from any sort of uh, Echo initiation. Yeah, that's so. going to be pretty key, because as you said, we do have two Blink, uh, or pseudo Blink initiators. We've got the Earthshaker who can Blink in, instant stun there, and then eventually late game we'll also have the Storm Spirit who can make the long jump Scythe of Ice play. So there's, there's going to be a lot of big initiation. Um, advantages for Navi if they push this late enough. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Right. I never quite understand. So these, some of these heroes are just so weird. Like, Spirit Breaker and Tuscar, it's, it's like, what's happening? I never understand anything. Like, the Spirit Breaker could just like, charge someone and ask them, like, ulti them or something. What to say. What's uh, what's our next item for um, SF at this point? Uh, do you go focus more mid game uh, and go S and Y, or do you need to start looking towards late game items? I personally would go butterfly, but um, not 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 exactly too sure here. I feel like Butterfly has a lot of value because neither Storm Spirit nor Razor are 